Hi, my name's Rebecca and welcome to episode 7 of the Korea Bear Nothing Podcast. Hello and welcome. Um, as I said, I'm Rebecca. I'm a crafter based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting. So what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I'd like to be knitting on in the not too distant future. And yeah, it's been a while since the last episode. It is that funny time of year between Christmas and New Year where you don't quite know what day it is and you sort of lose track of time. <laughs> um, and I'm super excited. I have a lot to talk about. Um, I'm a bit worried it'll be a long one because I can't work out how I'll get through all of this in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> um, but I guess the highlights are we moved house, so I'm now officially coming to you from Edinburgh. All the previous episodes were in London and I think this will be the podcasting spot. I'm right next to a big window. I have this huge, it's like a, it's called like a love seat. It's like a, a giant sofa chair basically and this is my knitting chair. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. I tried to film an episode a few weeks ago or last week, a few days before Christmas and I look back at the footage and I am visibly exhausted. <laughs> To the extent that I was a bit delirious, and so I thought I'll just try and film again in a few days once I've had a bit more sleep. So yeah, I have loads to talk about today. I have a couple of finished objects. I'm going to go through some of my gift knitting that I finished. I have a few whips. Um, one has almost been completely on and off the needles since the last episode, which is kind of crazy. Um, I have a, few, a little bit of knitting plans and then something exciting, I did a yarn swap with Mega of the Skeins of Dreams podcast and a few episodes ago I showed what I was sending her and before Christmas my box arrived so I thought I would go through what she sent me. I have a few other little acquisitions, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. So buckle up. Um, I also wanted to add a comment before I get into the knitting. Last episode, I oh, let me find this message. Last episode, I shared about going through, um, going to a lot of yarn shops in London, and I went to five in a day, <laughs> as one does, um, and I shared about my experiences of all of them. Firstly, everyone who watched and left comments, I loved them. A lot of you told me about your local yarn shops or places you've been to and your experiences and what you like about a yarn shop, what you don't like about some yarn shops, and that was just um, really fun to read. But um, a commenter, I think it was called Laura, left a message and said that, um, so I had been to Tribe Yarns, which is way over in the west of London, and had, I had said that they have a beautiful golden staircase that gets you from their ground floor to their first floor, and if you have accessibility needs, that might be problematic. And Laura pointed out that I probably should check with the shop before saying things like that, because they probably have a plan. And she's completely right, so I dropped them a message. So I messaged them and said, like, what's the deal? What happens um, when people can't use the staircase? And they messaged me back in like, yeah, they messaged me back in less than an hour on a Sunday morning. I was really impressed. So they said, hey, Rebecca, we do get a lot of people who can't or won't go up. When people know what they want, example, a burgundy DK weight yarn, we just bring down a selection from upstairs. If they want to see all the chunky yarns, we can't do anything about that. A lot of people check the selection on the website first so they can ask to see certain stuff. Does that help? So yeah, that was just um, a clear up from last time and a great comment from Laura and yeah, that's the deal. So they do have a beautiful staircase and it is a bit of a tricky one to go up, I think, especially if you were had issues, but they have a really, really good website. So if I put you off at all by that, um, there is a workaround and they're obviously used to dealing with that in the shop. So let's get into the knitting and we start with what I'm wearing because it's also a finished object and interestingly it's not the first time I've worn this yarn as a finished object but it was a different one last time and the, the OGs who've been here for a few episodes will know. So this is the sweater number nine um, which is a pattern by My Favourite Things Knitwear. It is a beautiful pattern. I bought this pattern ages ago and knit it up first in like an ugly acrylic yarn and I've since donated the jumper to charity because I just so didn't wear it. Um, what I really love about the company is that they make a lot of basics but they do it with some interesting detail. So this one you can see has this really interesting funnel neck and this beautiful raglan design. 
Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty plain sweater and it means that I find that it can fit into my wardrobe really well but it's not just knitting the same basic sweater over and over. Um, so yeah, it's been getting quite a bit of wear actually. It's already bobbling a little bit just because I've had it on a lot over the past few weeks. Um, uh, it's a really fast knit. I, I really liked it. It is knit up in Cascade 220 in the colour Pumpkin Spice, held together with two strands of Hobby Diablo in the colour Chestnut. Um, and the context of this yarn is that I had them both in stash for separate things and then combined them to make a Magnolia Bloom cardigan. I can put a picture of my Magnolia Bloom, which is so much fun to knit, but I finished it and it didn't really fit and it didn't, I couldn't find anything in my wardrobe that I liked how it looked with. So I frogged it um, and re the yarn and that's made this, which has already had 10 times as many wears as the Magnolia Bloom ever had. Um, and what else was I gonna say? When I, frogged the, when I frogged the Magnolia Bloom, I just frogged the mohair and the main yarn all at once and made them up into little cakes and then knit the cakes up again. I was worried when I knit this up because the fabric was quite messy. I'm not really sure what the word is. Obviously when you when you unravel knitting it's like like bobbly noodle like it looks like ramen noodles right like noodle yarn and so instead of being a good knitter and soaking and drying and then re-knitting that yarn I just knit it up because I was lazy and I was kind of just thinking like best case this is wearable worst case it was a, a project it was an adventure um, and so that's what I did and it was a bit messy but when I blocked it it blocked out beautifully and I put a picture of the finished object I took some nice pictures of this and yeah it's just it, it blocked out so well and looks really neat and exactly how I wanted it to um so I've worn this with like some high-waisted skirts I have some dresses that will go with but I'm struggling to like make that work just yet so maybe I'll do some more experimentation in the next few weeks if I to wear this it's super cozy it's really warm especially with this funnel neck you can kind of like Tuck it down, which I also quite like. I think that looks quite good. Um, but it is quite a warm jumper. So we in the flat don't, like we have our heating on in the morning a little bit, in the afternoon a little bit, in the evening a little bit. But when I was at my parents' house, my mum just has the heating cranked like all the time and I couldn't wear this jumper because I was dying. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my first finished object. And what I'm wearing, it is the Magnolia Bloom cardigan by my favourite things. No, Magnolia Bloom. See, already. It is the sweater number nine by my favourite things knitwear in Cascade 220 and Hobby Diablo. And yeah, I, I will say, I, I finished this in the midst of all my gift knitting and it was quite funny because the only reason I finished this is I didn't want to pack it as a whip because then I had like needles and yarn and a big bulky project and I was like, I'm finishing this and blocking this before I leave this flat in London and that's what I did. Um, which I was really chuffed with. So let's move on to my gift nets. Now I posted some pictures on Instagram and I'm gonna use that to keep me right because obviously most of them have been gifted. Now I have the ones I guess my boyfriend because we live in the same house so I could take them to show you but I do have some um, that have been gifted and I'll put pictures in. I'll go through these pretty quickly um, because I've shared a lot about them like in the past episodes as I've been going but let me start with my trio of socks. Um, so my trio of socks actually turned into a set of four pairs because he got another pair with them um, and this was for my stepdad who I mentioned a lot is very very knitworthy I think he's worn every single pair already some more than once and every time I put them on he'd be like look what I'm wearing <laughs> I was like I'm glad you like them <laughs> um, so there are two pairs of vanilla socks one with a heel flap and gusset and one with an afterthought heel and then so that's the stripy pair and then the plain green pair are vanilla and the purple pair are the Hermione Everyday Socks and all three of these are knit up in Cascade Heritage which is Superwash Merino and yeah, I think that's all. Um, I got I lost a lot of sock mojo making these. I started in September, I finished the first pair way back um, but fortunately my mojo came back and they went well. Um, so the second thing are my Sunday socks. I made two pairs of Sunday socks. One which is the sort of grey oatmeal colour in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. I used two balls and that's like the large size. I don't know, the adult men's I think they are. 
and then I made a pair in West Rogers Feathers, the Croft, and I can't remember the colour, but I'll add it to the screen. Um, and it used up all but the last. I did make the cuff a little bit shorter, um, mostly because I was just sick of knitting two by two rib. <laughs> so I think I made it five centimetres, four or five centimetres shorter than the pattern called for. This used up every single scrap of yarn to the extent that I was very pleased to get this yarn out of stash because I've had one skein of it in stash for ages. I thought I wouldn't make it. I ordered another skein. I only needed one skein and now the skein is back in stash. <laughs> Different skein, but it's still back in stash. Um, this pattern is amazing. It is the Sunday Sock by Petite Knit and it's just, it's a two by two rib worsted weight sock um, and it knits up incredibly fast. I knit most of, I think I could knit one in a day whilst also knitting on other things. Um, so really good for gift knitting. And I actually ordered some Peruvian, Filcolana Peruvian Highland wool in like a plum colour, which I was going to use for gifts because that's what the sock pattern suggests, but I'm going to make myself some at some point because they knit up really fast and they were super cosy and just like really good house socks and they have both been uh, very well received. The third thing that I knit a couple of was the Spiritual Guardian Cowl. This is a pattern I've talked about extensively. I made one and talked through it a few episodes ago, um, but I made two of these and I made them in, so the pattern is designed in DK yarn and I made them in worsted weight with a strand of mohair. So I downsized, so I made the smallest size of the pattern with a larger needle size and ended up getting pretty much the same dimensions as the larger size of the pattern in the pattern I was written for DK. So one of them I made with scraps, uh, well scraps, like a skein and a bit of Cascade 220 and Hobby Diablo. The Cascade 220 was in like a dove grey and the Hobby Diablo was a white and that was like a nice like fluffy, warm, um, really nice neutral. And the other I made in Blue Sky Fibres wool stock in their, it's like a mossy green colour. I did have the scraps but I've I don't know where I put them. Um, this house is a chaotic mess of boxes and it will take me much longer to go and find them than I would like to admit. So I'll just talk you through them. Um, so yeah, it was like a mossy green wool sock and a really rich dark green um, dropped kids up mohair and it came out in this beautiful like dark green, but like Celtic dark green with like a really like mossy colour, it was really really lovely. Um, my stepmom goes to the football quite a lot with my little brother and she doesn't like to wear like a football strip but she'll wear football colours and I thought that would be a nice way of like showing her team colours whilst wearing like a full coat and stuff because in Scotland you don't want to be spending too long outside at uh, the football. They are both really well received, I like them a lot. They knit up so fast. Um, I know a lot of people have been knitting it, but I would recommend if you've not looked at the pattern and you want like a nice quick cowl or you want to do cables for the first time, this pattern is perfect. And it's charted and written out and it's not very expensive. It's maybe three pounds 50. So yeah, you get a lot for your money and they were very well received. Then, the last two things, so I made my boyfriend a pair of socks, um, which I have with me. This is them. Um, they're already all crumpled from wear. <laughs> um, they're quite cool. It's just a vanilla sock, but it's in Viking, Viking Guard Nordlys, Nord, N-O-R-D-L-Y-S. Um, in like a purple colourway, and it was a really cool fade. Um, they've been worn twice, and they are, you can see, already pilling and felting a little bit which I'm not mad about, but I am a little bit worried. Um, Cause like I say, it's been two wears and this is the heel already. Um, so we'll see. He's not super hard wearing, but he does wear them in boots and I'm <clears throat> I wonder if the boots are what's causing the issue. Um, so yeah, they were really fun to knit and he liked them with a longer leg, so I did a longer leg than I would normally do for socks. I can actually see pretty much like by the way that they're felting, like here, this must be this must be where sock end where his boots end. <laughs> because there's quite a lot of felting there, and then above that there's none. <laughs> but they were very um very well received, a lot of fun to knit. 
and yeah I think I just have to make him some more socks because he wears them every day and if he had a pair to rotate in and out he probably wouldn't get quite so um worn down quite so quite the worn down quite so quickly and the last gift um sorry if I'm flying through these I feel like I'm just done with them like they're done and they're here so I'm giving you details but I have been working through a couple of different like I've been working on them in the past few episodes so if you want more details that's definitely even the last episode I talked about I think all of these the last thing was a set of three hats so um I bought some yarn from a brand called Too Mickey Yarns which means too much uh, it's Maori and she is a uh, UK based design UK based dyer who dyes based on the colours and places in New Zealand and my boyfriend's family his parents are both from New Zealand they're actually moving back in a few months after like 25 years in the UK um which is crazy but um I decided to get some skeins from her with the intention of originally getting my boyfriend's dad making him a hat but I also ended up um placing a second order and getting two more skeins one for his brother and one for my boyfriend himself because he was complimenting it so much um so I have his one and then I can add the pictures of the other ones so it's this is it now I can't remember this colorway but it is the most insanely beautiful like dark rainbow but what I love is it's really colorful but when it's on it's quite like a classic neutral like it doesn't look like a rainbow colored hat um it just looks like a cool like darker colour so you can wear it with he's got like a black jacket he's got a blue jacket and it goes with all of them and um, it is the oh and there are two more so the orangey coloured one is called Hokey Pokey which is like honeycomb in New Zealand and um, it's quite cool because his, his brother's kind of like at least he thinks he's cool and edgy I don't know if he is cool and edgy he's like a just graduated uni and so he wears it like this <laughs> like a proper little like cap like a little beanie with a second fold up um, so he's been wearing that because every picture we've had since Christmas day he's been wearing his hat in it and the other one is called Iraqi um, which is the Maori name well the Maori name for Mount Cook but actually Mount Cook isn't the name for is the English name for the Maori place of course because it was colonised um, and his my step my oh, my my goodness I'm getting so confused uh, my boyfriend's dad uh, had a company in the UK and he called his company Iraqi um, but he's now moving to a job in New Zealand and so he won't have the company anymore and so it was really nice to give him a hat with the Iraqi yarn as like a start your new chapter but you've still got a little bit with you yeah I don't know if I'm getting too deep it was just yarn <laughs> but I really liked it and I will say I've done it a few times um, I made a shawl a few episodes ago and I do really love getting like a really special hand dyed yarn and then make and gifting it into something because I just think it's it's so so nice. Um it just makes it like a really meaningful gift, but also it's it's just a hat, but it's a really meaningful gift. So this is the Pearl Soho Classic Ribbed Beanie. I think all of Pearl Soho's hats run big. I've not heard anyone make one in the real size and actually you have it fit their head <laughs> so I did use a much thicker yarn but I knit it up in the smallest adult size which was it's a free pattern so I can share stitch count I think I cast on 108 stitches and then I knit for like eight and a half inches and then I just did the decreases so I ended up slightly shorter than the dimensions because I had fewer stitches to decrease um, but even then I think it's quite a wide it's quite a wide fold up and if I put it on how I would wear it, there's still like a little bit of bit at the end. So I think it fits perfectly. And I'm going to make myself one. I have some Manos del Uruguay yarn, a red skein in the same weight as this, that I'm going to make myself one at some point. So yeah, that is a rundown of all my gifts. Um, like I say, apologies if I'm flying through them, but they've all been gifted and they're done. And I'm a little bit done with gift knitting for now. I did do more of a breakdown of all the patterns and the yarns in the previous episode if you want to see more. Um, but yeah, I didn't plan to do as much gift knitting as I did and then little items just kept getting like creeping onto the onto the, the list and I did stress myself out a little bit with how many I did. But 
I will say I've given them all now and the reactions and people wearing them already makes it so worthwhile. <laughs> so I could tell you I will not do this many gift nights next year but that would almost certainly be a lie because I will probably do the same amount if not more. Um, so yeah that's everything for my FOs. Let me jump into my whips. I have unsurprisingly also quite a lot of whips. <laughs> so Let's start with a whippy scene before. Um, when I filmed last week and then didn't use the footage because I look like a zombie, I had no progress to show on this, but I have actually made a little bit of progress, so I can show you that today. It is the Billy Sweater. It's a pattern by Sari Nordland, which is now out. It is like a 10 out of 10. This pattern is amazing. It's so unique. It's so interesting. Um, it knits up really lovely. It is, I think the word I use so far to describe it is intense. It's not hard and I think this is why it's taking me so long is that I've done all the challenging parts apart from like there are a couple of bind offs still that are going to be tricky but it's not quite mindless knitting because I need to check if I'm on a it's got double moss stitch so I have to check that I have to count for cables so it's not like I can just sit and knit in the dark or like watching TV just round and round it's not simple stock and it but it's not quite interesting enough that I think if I want a really interesting project, I'll pick it up and be like, yeah, let's engage my brain. But I am making progress and I'm very, very excited for the finish knit. So this is my Billy sweater. It is a top down raglan sweater with this like honeycomb, um, honeycomb cabling and then cables either side. I finished one sleeve a while ago and I'm pretty close to the second sleeve being done. I have maybe other 10 centimetres to go and the ribbing and then it's just the body to go. I did order an extra skein of yarn so I don't have all the yarn here. I'm using um, Cascade 220 in the colour Shire. I think it's blowing it a little bit here. Maybe not. I'm quite in a, I'm quite a bright spot. It's a beautiful like Celtic green um, and I was on the fence about it but I'm really glad like this. <laughs> I've seen other versions and I still like mine the most and I think that is a sign of knowing when you've made a good choice of yarn. Um, so yeah, for the test knit deadline, the test knit deadline was ages ago, I think it was the end of November, I had to do the yoke and a sleeve, so I, I did that and then I put it down for a little while. So I've got the second sleeve to finish and then the body and um, I put the body on hold because I wanted to see how much yarn I would use but ultimately I just ordered an extra skein because I wanted the freedom to knit as long as I wanted it. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll have this finished for next time. I reckon if I put some work into this, I definitely could. Um, and it's not like I've lost interest and I'm so excited for the finished object. It's just not, um, it's just not what I always, like, I usually either want stock in it, mindless knitting, or I want to really engage my brain in something and this is sitting somewhere between the two. So I don't automatically go for it. But I only picked this up again to knit on a few days ago and I've already got most of the sleeve done. So I do think it goes quite quickly. It's on size four needles, maybe 4.5? No, four. Um, yeah, and one more thing about this. Sorry, I just zipped, so unzip again. Um, I had a very good Secret Santa this year. So my Secret Santa, we did a Secret Santa with like um, my boyfriend's friend group. He's been friends with them for since they were like 16 uh, and some of them even younger like one of them they were in like baby classes together like mum and baby classes anyway we did like a that group and partners secret santa and my secret santa's a knitter she knows i'm in it and she watches the podcast and so um i mentioned in the last podcast about chow goo needles and how i wanted to invest a little bit in chow goos more on that later but she got me a size four set so i also now have a size four um interchangeable and a cable so I'm excited to get onto the body of the knitting because when I got to the body of that I could switch to my chagos <laughs> and she also got me some um Kelly and the Machine the Sweary Sewist labels which say things like uh cute AF and this one I like if you read that it says I didn't F it up <laughs> so yeah that is whip number one my Billy Billy pullover but, oh, it's by Sari Nordland, uh, and it's in Cascade 220 in the colour Shire. Okay, whip number two is my Christmas Eve cast on. So, um, there is a yarn dyer who's based in the UK called 
I don't know her name, I should know her name, but the business is called Stripey Cat Yarns and um, she makes self-striping sock yarn, I don't know if it's all sock, but she makes self-striping self -striping yarn and recently came out with a non-superwash, no nylon sock base and Kat from Heather and Hops has been knitting up a pair, maybe two, she might have split the skein, in the nut, Nutcracker colourway and it was beautiful, like just so 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 beautiful. And so then Stripey Cat posted about having um, Christmas Eve cast on colours and there were two themes, one was called Christmas at Hogwarts and one was called Ca a Cabin for Christmas or Christmas at the Cabin and I'm a big Potter head so I thought I'd go for the Harry Potter one but I will say in retrospect I kind of wish I'd gone for the Cabin colour because these aren't really my colours and I should have known because the post was like a picture of Hogwarts in the snow with like a blue, like a pale blue like wrapper like around the picture and the cabin one had like a like a this colour brown around it and those would have been much more my colours I think because actually it's not just called Christmas at Hogwarts, it's called an icy Christmas at Hogwarts and I don't think, I don't think that was on it when I ordered it but I could be completely wrong. However, an icy Christmas at Hogwarts and it is 100% British Corydale 80 and it's an 80 gram main with a 20 gram mini skein. I've never had a hand dyed sock set, sock, I don't think I have, maybe I'm lying. No I'm not, I've never had, this is the first time I saw, like I touched, a, I've owned a mini skein so it's definitely the first one. Um, but let me show you, firstly the yarn, so um, this is the yarn, it is, it's beautiful, like the colours are lovely, it's like a blue, grey colour, with like a lilac and a purple. And then the mini skein, oh I've got a needle stuck in it, this is the mini skein which is like an icy blue. And so I did my first ever toe up sock. So um, it's kind of hard to sew, show toe up, it is, this isn't knit up, it's lovely, I'm just not crazy about it. I think the problem is, is the nutcracker colour is stunning. And this by comparison I'm not crazy about, um, but I, what I am impressed at is like these are insanely good colours to get for non-superwash and I mean it it's still festive. I just feel like I'm knitting like a pair of frozen socks from like frozen, right? Rather than I don't know, it's just not what I expected, and that's my own fault for ordering. However, it is knitting up lovely, it's not splitty at all, it's really nice to knit with, and um, it's really vibrant colours, and I'm super excited that it's a non-superwash sock base because I want to do a bit more non-superwash um, experimentation in 2022. Uh, so I did a toe up, I started with like a Judy's Magic cast on, I tried this before and gotten like two rows in and found it so fiddly that I gave up but it stuck this time. I used the tutorial by Craft House Magic, I love her podcasts, um, so I used that one. And then I also have done a, I was going to say it's a Fleagle heel, it's not, it is a Fish Lips Kiss heel, which is the first time I've done it. Um, and I actually quite like it. I think it really needs some blocking because it just looks kind of ugly at the minute. Um, but what I really enjoyed, so I love the fit of a heel flap and gusset but I don't like knitting heel flap and gusset and because there was such a clear like main colour and contrast I wanted a real like separate, um, a really separate heel, like contrast heels and toes as opposed to like just different coloured heel flap. So that was fun to do. As I say, I've not done it before. I found it pretty quick, pretty easy. I would definitely do this again. I'm not entirely sure I've got it right. Like, I feel like I've got quite a big ridge here um, where the short rows are, but that could just be me. I will definitely try this again. I have a lot of sock plans, so I, I'm looking forward to just trying a lot of different toes and this one will be one I'll give another go. Um, so yeah, my plan is basically to knit until I have 50 grams left. It might make some very long socks. What I have done is I'm starting to do increases because I have, my calves are definitely thicker than my ankles. Um, and usually if I have hand knit socks, they just like, they don't kind of like bunch down because they don't go as high. So I'm thinking if I make higher socks, I'll do just a couple of increases, maybe like four increases. So I've done two, maybe two more, which will give me like, and maybe an extra centimeter. Maybe I'll keep going. It has to be in twos because of the ribbing. And I have, 13 grams of this left, this is the contrast, so I kind of want to do the cuff in a contrast but I don't know if three, I don't think three grams is going to be enough to do the cuff. 
It's a little bit annoying. So I've not decided that yet. I don't know. But yeah, so here we go. Um, so it's a bit funny right now because it's a toe and a heel and a bit. But it's been a lot of fun to knit with. Um, and I've got a lot of sock mojo right now because of these. The Chagu Magic Loop method. I changed to Magic Loop. I used to knit DPNs. Magic Loop has brought back my sock mojo. I bought some more sock yarn yesterday because I went to Ginger Twist Studio, which is my local yarn shop. My new local yarn shop. Check me being smug about it. Um, it's also an indie dyer. They make amazing yarn themselves. But I went there and picked up some more sock yarn. So I'm going to be knitting a lot of socks, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's my second whip, my Christmas Eve cast on. Maybe I'll try... Oh, maybe not. I was going to be like, it'd be great if I could do the second sock as a New Year's Eve cast on, but I'm realising New Year's Eve is tomorrow. <laughs> so that might be a bit unreasonable. But we'll see. Um, they knit pretty quick, so maybe I can finish one today. We'll see. Maybe it's a New Year's Day cast on. Give myself an extra day. Um, yeah, that is whip number two. Two more to go. And they're both completely new. And one's not even a real whip. <laughs> okay, whip number three um, is, I mentioned it last time but I hadn't cast it on yet. And it is in a very cool new bag. Also for my Secret Santa. And this was like a gift bag, but actually it just makes a really good sort of festive... It's kind of got these little sparkles, it's kind of looks like snow. Anyway, it is a, a new cast on. This is a pattern by uh, Sophie of the Knit Pearl Girl. She has a few patterns actually, I've never knit any of them before. I had bought the Color Birth sweater and never got around to making it. Um, however, she did a tester call and what she was looking for was... Oh yeah, one of the yarns that she recommended I had in the stash. That's what it was. And I thought, well, you know what? I could do with getting this off my needles. Sorry, I could do with getting this yarn at my stash. And I I had no other plans for it. And I liked the pattern and I thought, why not give it a go and help out by doing a test knit. And it's knitting up really lovely. So this pattern, let me start there. Sorry, there's lots of bits on it. I don't understand how it's... It's got like fluff all over the place. Um, <laughs> It's been carted around a fair bit over the past few days and I feel like it's just picked up here from everywhere. Um, so, this pattern, I will pop in, um, I think there's a cutaway picture I can, I can find. It is called the Crescendo Sweater and as you can see, it's got these like triangular, um, like it's like a diamond lace pattern that sort of descends over the yoke, <laughs> which I think is the part that makes it really special. Um, it's quite simple, it's definitely, definitely, if you've not done lace before and you want to do lace, this is the pattern for it. It's well written, it's both charted, it's explained well, and it's a pretty simple lace pattern because it's just knit two togethers and yarn overs and some increases. So it's not, it's not complicated lace, it's definitely a good way to start. So yeah, it's really crumpled, apologies, it's been in my bag. Um, I've, I've flown through this, like absolutely flown through this. Um, I had a weekend, an unexpected weekend at home, and I cast this on just before we moved, and I cast this on and powered through it um, and had like most of the yoke done that day. And I was a bit concerned about, um, similar to the Billy sweater, I was a bit concerned about my, sorry, I'm really like hunched up. Um, <laughs> I was a bit concerned about my yarn amount, so I did the sleeves, and actually I'm gonna have plenty of yarn. Did I order an extra skein? I don't think so. I think this is five skeins. So, yeah, it's going really well. Um, I just, I think, I think I'm going to start the ribbing. Um, although holding it up, it does look quite cropped. So what I might do is knit this onto a bigger cable. I need to get myself some of those barber, no, they're by, they're called stitch marker cables or something. Those like plastic tubes that you can put on to try things on. They're kind of hard to get in the UK. I found two places to get them. Um, but I've not sold them either yet. I had like shipping baskets open in both and not decided. So I'll order some at some point. Um, but yeah, so uh, I need to try this on and see what I think about the length of it. And then decide if I want to knit more or if I want to do the ribbing. I was pretty sure I'd go straight into ribbing, but I'm holding this up now and it maybe does feel shorter than I thought it was. So maybe I'll do an extra 10 centimeters or so. Um, the sleeves are lovely. I'm doing the long sleeve, 
like um the balloon sleeve version my rib cuff looks absolutely tiny but it's it's pretty stretchy and this is a sewn bind off now i the pattern calls for a tubular bind off i found a tutorial for for a tubular bind off from the chili dog and i i like a lot of the tutorials so i followed that one but i'm pretty sure it's called like one by one tubular bind off the video but at no point in this do you separate like I think with a tubular bind off you have to do some preparation setup rows and in this there's no preparation <laughs> so I don't think this is a tubular bind off I think maybe it's a sewn bind off or something else either way it's still pretty neat and it does the same sort of effect of like it looks like it rolls over the, the end and um, this one's not quite as neat I don't think I think I made a mistake on this one but it's still it's still pretty good in my head and yeah this is so close to being done I just need to try it on and then finish it off there is going to be sewn bind off on the body which I think will be a bit of a bitch sorry a bit of a nightmare um I can't remember I just swore it I'd be quite good at not doing that on the podcast I'll bleep myself if I can do that um and the yarn I'm using is this it is the West Yorkshire Spinners Retreat which is a chunky roving yarn um 100% blue faced Kerry Hill I've not heard of that before um, and yeah it is 140 meters per 100 gram ball and this is the color pure so the story behind this yarn is I ordered it from Lovecraft and I ordered it ages ago and I can't remember what I was going to knit with it but I ordered it oh, age it like I mean to be to be fair I've been knitting for two years I've only really been garment knitting for a year so probably only a year old but it was when I just started garment knitting so probably about a year ago um, and I ordered this and I cannot remember what pattern I ordered it for but I needed like six balls and they sent me three and I contacted them to get the rest and they were like oh we don't have any more in stock um, we can refund you or you can keep it like do what you want with it and I was like right okay well I'll just keep it um, and I'll find something to do with it and it sat in stash for ages and ages and ages which is why I was so excited for it to come up and a test neck because I thought I can get this off my needles. It's super well priced. It is, I believe, six pounds ish. I think the cheapest I could find it was like five eighty. Um, and like I say, I'm knitting the fourth size, and I've only needed. I've still got a whole ball left to do the rest of the body, which will be more than enough. Um, so yeah, basically thirty quid for a jumper, which is I think really well priced. What I will say is the gauge of this jumper is exactly the same as the gauge for cardigan number seven by my favorite things knitwear and I used or the most commonly used combo for that I think is drops air and drops kid silk I think that would be luxurious in this it's not recommended I think the pattern has been written up in I know that Sophie's a we are knitters ambassador and so she designs a lot of her patterns and we are knitters yarn understandably and I think this is maybe in one of their eco yarns, I'm honestly not too sure. Um, and this was recommended as, a, as an alternative, but if I were to recommend this, re disregarding any of the pattern advice already given by the designer, <laughs> I would say uh, that it'd be good to do, it would anything that we'd use for, I think it's 14 stitches, 14 by 20, um, on a seven mil needle, I would use Drops Air and Drops Kid Silk if I was to make this again because there's a much better selection of colours. It'd be like a really soft, fluffy fabric. Um, and I think it'd be really beautiful. So yeah, that is whip number two. The deadline for this is like 14th of February, 10th of February, sometime early February. I'm gonna be well done by then. Part of me is like, if I do something wrong, because I can't, I think it's a really long deadline for the pattern, but I guess, um, Christmas is busy. I was really hesitant about, I think I've talked a bit about test knitting and how I was going to try not to do so much test knitting. That was like two episodes ago and here I am with another test knit. Um, but yeah, this is really, really no stress at all. Um, and I think even if I was to say to Sophie like, oh, I can't finish it now. I don't think she'd mind too much. I think she's quite chill. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to finish this in time. I might I probably finish this by January, a whole month early. That makes me feel like a real swat, like a real 
good student and I'm finishing my test notes so I had the deadline. And yeah, it's got this really, this is a bit I really love. It's got a real chunky collar. I would definitely do this again in patterns that didn't call for a folded collar. Um, a lot of patterns I've seen pick, ask you to pick up the, like you knit the body, like the Billy, the Billy sweater, you knit the body and you pick up stitches for the collar to fold them over. This one just knits straight in and I, that was beautiful. I liked having it done, at the, like it was done already. Um, so you just knit twice as long and then fold it over. So yeah, my crescendo sweater. I believe this pattern's also in a blouse. It's a crescendo blouse. Blouse. Um, which is in a thinner yarn. Maybe it's a DK weight. And it has like, because there's because there are more stitches here, it's a much more like intricate, I think there are like four rounds of decreases. And I've seen a few, I think the, I think the one that Sophie herself knit is in this like, periwinkle blue colour, it's beautiful. So yeah, keep your eyes on this and because I, um, for for being a test setter for Sophie, the reward, I guess, the compensation is three of her patterns. Um, so I'd be really curious, I already own the colour burst, if anyone has knitted any of her patterns and would recommend any of them. Because um, I've had a look and I'm not really sure where to start, I think there's, there's a lot there. Um, so yeah, let me know if you've knit any of the Knit Pro Girls patterns and if you'd recommend any of them that I can use for my, my three that I have. My three that I have? Yeah, I can use as my payment, my reward for my, for my time. The last thing is also a whip, but um, I was doing a lot of swatching last night. I actually have another pattern that I think I'll have cast on by next podcast, but I'm, it's already going to be a long one, so I'll save that one. Um, but I, we, we do a knit night, I've mentioned it a few times, it's an online Zoom knit night if you want to join. Um, follow myself or Caroline, Caroline's Knit or Anastasia from Free Your Sheep on Instagram because we share about it. I think the next one is going to be on January 4th um, and you just need to message one of us for the Zoom link. It's really fun, the past few times, like last time there were 50 people online uh, from all over the world. Anyway, one of the people on a call, I think it was Chloe, was wearing a sweater number 11 by my favourite things knitwear and it was, it was stunning. And ever since then I've wanted it. So, um, I've just been waiting to cast it on really and now is the time I'm going to cast it on. Well actually, I cast it on already, however, it is, I'll put a picture so you can see, it is, I think you knit the top, like the, the yoke front and back separate and then join in the round under the sleeves. And my gauge, I did a gauge swatch and I did a gauge swatch round and my gauge was way looser. And then I started, but I didn't think about it. I hadn't really looked at the pattern construction, I should have realised, but I just thought, oh, it's knitted in the round. So I did a swatch in the round. Had to go down a half needle size and got gauge perfectly. But I cast on this morning, did the first like 10 rounds or 10 rows. And realised that because it's knit back and forth, my gauge is actually much tighter. So I've ripped it out and I'm going to cast that back on, maybe this afternoon, um, in 5mm, which is what's recommended in the pattern. And I might have to go back down needle size once I'm in the round. But I'm knitting this with two yarns, one I've never used before, and one, I'm sorry, it's a real mess. I tried to untangle my mohair, but the middle, I tried to knit centre of the ball and I got that like, I think, I think it's called yarn vomit, you know when the whole big ball comes out? And most of the time I like it, but this time it's a bit out of control. So this is the first colour. It is Cascade 220. The colour is River Rock. And I bought this as a potential alternative yarn for the Billy sweater and didn't use it. Um, used the green. But I knew once it arrived I'd still use it, so I didn't bother returning it. So that is what that is, and that is an iron weight, like 200 metres per 100 grams. And this one, yeah, apologies for this. Like this is the yarn vomit. It's just gone a bit, a bit messy. Um, but this here is um, Philcolanatilia. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Philcolanatilia, which is thirty percent mohair, seventy percent silk. I got this from Knit Yarns, um, who is amazing, great stockist, ridiculously fast shipping. Um, got it a while ago, and yeah, um. I already unraveled my swatch because that's what I do. <laughs> Unless it's something like cables I need to wash and block, I usually just unravel it once I've done it. Um, call me a bad knitter. But yeah, that's what they're gonna look together. So it's kind of warm, like mushroomy beige color. And I'm excited. 
Um, the only thing with this is that the ribbing is twisted rib and I've not yet fixed my, rip, my pearl stitches and currently I knit twisted pearls in the round. Um, the good thing is, is that you pick up for the collar afterwards. So I've got a little bit of time before I have to worry about this, but I need to work out either I fix my pearls before... It's the thing, I can fix my pearls before I get to the ribbing and then I don't need to worry about having twisted pearls. Then I don't need to worry about interpreting the instructions for only twisted ribs because I already have twisted pearls. However, it feels a bit redundant because I need to learn a twisted rib as a twisted knit and a twisted pearl. So maybe just leave my problem pearl now and somehow interpret the pattern differently. I don't know. Um, but the other thing about this is it's in a really cool bag. This is a petite knit bag, which I got from No Frills Knitting. They're not in stock anymore. I think she only got three of each of the colors. But this is it. It's just a little tote bag, um, but it's really nice. It's in a cotton as opposed to a canvas, so it's quite soft. And it has these nice big pockets. And yeah, I'm gonna make my September number, sweater number 11 in this. Um, yeah. So that is everything for my whips. Now, I have a big box of yarn to go through, but before I do that, I am planning a new cast on, and it ties in very nicely to a cal I'm gonna do. So I thought I would, I know it's gonna add lots of time to this episode, but I need to talk about this now because my brain is in it. So I thought what I would do is um, talk about the pattern and the color options I'm considering, because hopefully by next episode I'll have cast it on, and then I can wrap up with my yarn swap box of goodies and a few other little pieces that I got in the post. So yeah, on to my next, I have a big project. It's gonna, it's gonna be a big one, but it's very cool. <laughs> so, um, I was watching yesterday the Black Spruce Knitting podcast. I've recommended her before. I love it, it's a great podcast. And she was talking about knitting a shawl for a knit along that I'm hosting. <laughs> so the knit along is the Knitting First Cal it is, I'm hosting it together with oh, um, with Lisa from And So On and the purpose of the cal is to knit something for the first time. So either knit for the first time or knit a new thing for the first time or knit a new technique. So you might not be, a, you might make a garment or you might make a sock, you've made socks before or you might pick up something like brioche or colour work that you've not done. And I was back and forth about what to do Obviously I just started to up socks, so that's one of my knitting firsts. Um, the cal is running until the 1st of February. We already have some amazing prizes, um, which I'm super excited about. And uh, you can just enter by putting your finished item into the knitting firsts cal fo thread on Instagram. So just like post a picture and you have to like share that hashtag. But I did feel like a bit of a phony because I didn't think that was a big enough challenge for anything first, Cal. Um, because like two, like two at a time socks is on the list and toe up socks is on the list, but I thought let's try something completely new. So I was watching the podcast, this is all very circular. I was watching the podcast, um, the Black Spruce Knitting podcast, and she wanted to make the Scout shawl. And I've seen this before, but it's been out of my radar for a while. And now I have the bug, like I need to cast this on. So I'll share a picture, this is a scout shawl. It's designed by, it's designed, I don't know who the designer is, but I will add the name of the designer. The concept of the scout shawl is it's meant to look like a patchwork quilt. Um, I think it is beautiful. Things I like about it are, it's a shawl, but it's not too deep. Like I don't really wear deep, like crescent shawls or triangular shawls. I would wear a scarf, but I wouldn't really wear much of a shawl. But this kind of is a shawl which isn't, it's kind of almost a scarf, so I think I will wear it. It is an undertaking in terms of there's a lot going on, but it's also, like it has five colours, the, the, the yardage is like a thousand metres. So it's not like a five skein huge shawl that's going to take me months and months and months and months and months. It's, um, it's small enough that I think I'll be able to see progress quite quickly, which I think I'll need for this project. And the third thing I love is that every single version I've seen, the colour combinations are beautiful. Like I've not, there, even the ones that are ones that I don't, like there are a few that I've seen that are really, really bright that I wouldn't wear. I still think it looks very well curated. And I think that's because the way, like every, the colours all appear more than once. 
in the pattern. So I got this idea in my head and now I'm obsessed and I want to cast this on like immediately <laughs> but I've been doing a lot of playing around um, and I have seven potential colour choices but the issue is is that a couple of them are too close, to, like there need to be enough, how do I put this, there are colours one to five so for example colour one goes with every colour but colour five only pairs with two other colours but a couple of the colours are too bold and don't don't go with the rest well enough. So let me talk about our colours first. So these are skeins. Because the pattern doesn't require too much yardage, these are skeins, I've got a couple of skeins here that are eventually going to be fingering weight patterns. Um, sorry, sweater patterns, sweater quantity. Sorry, I'm picking it all up the floor. <laughs> eventually, I want to make sweaters out of these, but I don't think a couple of hundred metres will make a difference in the grand scheme of things so I'm gonna just go ahead and knit with them for now. So a couple of colours I think I'm gonna have in every single one. So the first one is Ecru which is a yarn cone from Woolly Knit. There's quite a few Woolly Knit here actually. And the second is this, it's also, it's the same wool, it's just this, this is a cone, this is a hank, also from Woolly Knit and this is the Heron colourway which is like a really lovely like steel grey. So these two will be in whichever project I make but then I have a couple which I'm not sure about. The third is also it's a cinnamon colour, it's like the best colour that, that they do, like it's beautiful, it's just wonderful, it's like oh, yeah it's actually very similar to the colour I'm wearing <laughs> but yeah this is the Woolly Knit Hank in the cinnamon colour. Um, oh then there's this one, which is the also Woolly Knit in, you can tell I'm a big Woolly Knit fan, also Woolly Knit in the Harvest colour. Yeah. And then I had two skeins of Mondeem. I don't think these have names, just colour color codes. Yeah. So it's 111 and 110 in the Mondeem. So those are the options. So, oh, oh sorry, and I also have this which is a pale grey and it is Exmoor Sock um, from John Arbin which is a non superwash. It does have nylon but it's a non superwash sock yarn um, in this pale grey. So these two, some of the yarns here, these two are definite. The issue being is like I can't then put all four of these because the contrast isn't high enough. So if I put the two of these in colour work, in the same colour work chart the contrast isn't high enough and it's the same with like these two, the contrast isn't high enough and then with this one like again it's all a bit too similar so I pretty much need to have, I think I need to have like maximum two contrast colours. So what I really like, I put a poll on Instagram and these are the ones that's the least popular. I like this a lot which is, <laughs> I should have thought about this before, like these, these four and the Ecru. I actually have some pictures of these, I can put them in. Um, but the most popular one actually I think was like maybe this. I think this, these three plus the two were the most popular. But I have some pictures, so I'll put the pictures on. Uh, if you've not, if you didn't see it in, on, on uh, Instagram, I'd love to hear which option you like the most. And any tips you might have. This is knit in flat, it's colourwork flat. So there's a new skill. It's in Tarja. So there's a new skill. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I think I'm going to cast on pretty soon. It will need some brain space. I might cast this on maybe tomorrow. Um, or yeah, in the, ne in the next couple of days when I have some like bright light and time. Because <laughs> I think those are my requirements. And yeah, that's my scout shawl. Hopefully it'll be a wet by next episode because I'm excited to get stuck into this. But yeah, I'll put the four options. So this is option one, this is option two, this is option three, and this is option four. So do tell me if you like any of them or if you have any other suggestions and hopefully I can make a decision today or tomorrow. I'm feeling very indecisive. I had like my iPad out and I had Procreate open and I was colouring the charts and the potential colours 
tried to match up which colours go together. I think I have the one I like, but it is not the one that's popular on Instagram. So I'd love to hear from you what you think about it. And yeah, that is something I'm super excited about. And this will be my big entry into the Knitting First Cal, which you can also enter by posting with the hashtag Knitting First Cal or hashtag Knitting First Cal FO thread on Instagram. And we'll be pulling prizes in pretty much in a month. Super exciting. So one last thing to go through and that is my yarn swap box and it's a good one so stay tuned. <laughs> okay so a few months ago, it is actually months ago now, a few months ago I mentioned wanting to try some yarns from the US and Mega from the Skates of Beans podcast said I can send you some and I said well why don't we do a yarn swap. So the box arrived, I had it sent to Scotland to my parents house so that um if there were any delays in the moving, um, it would be somewhere that I could make sure I could get it. And it's amazing. So, um, Mega, I, I filmed it a few episodes ago. I did a bit at the end, which included what I sent to her. But she also put up an episode and it is so fun to watch. It's only maybe 15 minutes long and it's like her live unboxing. <laughs> Um, with like the real life reactions and it's amazing. It's so so fun to watch. So I would recommend it. I'd especially recommend it because I sent quite a lot of like classic British treats um, and she'd never heard of a lot of them and so she got really excited by them but she was like getting excited over a packet of skips which in the UK is like a very standard packet of crisps and it's just so cute. It's so fun to watch. Um, I don't think you can watch it without a smile on your face so I would recommend it. But she sent me. Now I will say, when I opened this, uh, it was the day we, the day after we moved and there was nothing about me that was ready to film. <laughs> so I did not do a live filming of me opening it, but I thought I'd take you through it now. Um, so we set a budget of £150, just $200 US dollars, and we both sent each other like a little description of what we wanted and mine was like, neutrals, navy, grey, like those kind of colours. Um, DK weight, fingering weight, or iron weight, and non superwash. So, let me start. So, the very first thing is actually superwash, but it's only superwash in the box, and it is some Knit Picks Felici. Um, it's a sock yarn from Knit Picks, and I have heard a lot about Felici, and these are definitely being made into a pair of socks for my boyfriend, because um, he's already seen them and quite likes them. Super soft. Uh, I presume it's self striping. I think um, like this maybe is a pretty accurate palette of the self stripe when it stripes up. So yeah, that's number one. Okay, I'll try and go through the nitpicks first. The nitpicks is a yarn I wanted to try, hence why there's quite a bit of nitpicks in here. Uh, there are four skeins of this, but I can only find three because I moved this to our office slash craft room, which is currently very chaotic and I've put some yarns in different places, but I think I have at least one of everything here. So the next thing is City Tweed. Um, this is beautiful. This is um, like a Tweedy DK, um, 123 yards for 50 grams and this is so soft. So it's 55% merino, 25% alpaca, 20% tweed and it is just incredibly soft. Um, a few of these things I have pattern ideas for and I will share when I do have pattern ideas but a couple I don't and this is one of them. So I guess I have 500 yards which is what like 450 meters? Um, it could be next to Skin Soft, so any suggestions for this are very welcome. Okay, the next two are stunning. They're so drapey. So this is Woodsong Farm, which is in Bassett, Virginia. It's VA, Virginia. It's DK weight, uh, so 200 yards per 100 grams, and it is 100% fin sheep, all natural from the farm, and it is in a nat these are the two natural colourways. So I think the colours aren't great here. So this is like an almost like a very like an antique beige. And this is a very, very rich brown. I would love to keep them together. Also because like they're really they're really drapey. Like you can see that there's not a lot of structure to them. Um so yeah, suggestions for this, super welcome. I would like to see something I will wear because I think it's beautiful. So yeah, 600 yards in DK weight. Amazing. I love this. I was screaming as I opened this box, which you'll not be surprised to hear. Okay. Then there's this. Now, this still has um, 
mega attached little like labels to all of them and some have taken off but this one's still on. This is amazing. This is Roots and Reins yarn. It's their field sock and it's a sport weight sock which is 80% Canadian wool, 20% nylon. Um, and it's dyed with indigo and rainwater. I just love this. It's, it's perfect. It's so beautiful. Um, it is 393 metres per 115 grams. I noticed that with a few. They're done in ounces instead of grams. So my brain, like I had a calculator up trying to work out grams to ounces and yards to metres <laughs> to try and work out what, how much yardage I actually had. Um, and that is just it's beautiful. So this will 100% be a pair of socks for me and I need to have a look because I don't really knit with sport weight and I definitely don't have any sport weight patterns so I'll go digging for some sport weight sock patterns. I'm thinking something relatively simple but like a nice texture so maybe a cable or maybe probably not lace but yeah. There's that one. Oh I forgot more knit picks. sorry I said I'd do the knit picks first and forgot and it's sitting right next to me. So I have these and one more, I have another one of these, but it's not in the box because I have lost it somewhere. Um, this is the Nitpix Eco Wool, sorry, Simply Wool Worsted Weight. It is 218 yards per 100 grams. I think this is pretty bang close to the Cascade 220, but I will say it's softer. It's not super wash, it's Eco Wool. I don't know how they classify Eco Wool, but you can see like this is Cascade River Rock. And this is, yeah, this one's like a slightly warmer and this is a slightly more like bluish hue. Um, it's beautiful. It's super, super soft. Um, and really plump. Like I'm surprised this is not super wash. So it is 100% equal wool. Yeah. That's about all I've got. And it's about 200 metres. I've just undone that skein so now it's got a bit funky. So I have two in this colour. And then two in this colour, and I think they'd be really lovely in like a low contrast project together. I'm wondering if there's a way of doing the half and half triangles wrap in worsted weight with four skeins, but I don't know if I've got enough yardage until I look into that. Alternatively, yeah, I think a really simple shawl would be lovely. Um, Something that I can just really wrap myself up in that's cosy and warm and goes with everything. So yeah, 400 metres of this. Yeah, it should be enough, right? 400 and 400 in these, t in these two. Oh, those colours are just so good. My, my windowsill is getting very full, <laughs> full of yarn. <laughs> okay, let me talk about this one. Because when I opened this box of this, I screamed. And my boyfriend was like, I don't get it. And I was like, you don't understand. It's Peace Fleece. And he was like, what's Peace Fleece? <laughs> so this is Peace Fleece. Um, in, oh, can you see that colour? It is, it's very much a red. It's a really, really warm red. It's more, it's much more reddish. This is more like an orange and this is much more of a red. Um, but it does have like a lot of depth to the colour. I think it, it looks like to me it's been dyed on a darker base and it's made it really tonal. And I have three skeins of this. Um, the colour is um, Shiplova Mushroom. I might be saying that wrong. It is 75% Navajo Rambouillet and Domestic Fine Wool with 25% Mohair. And it is 350 yards per 4 ounces. Um, so I think this is a DK weight. Again, my brain is struggling. My brain is struggling to convert a lot of these. But I have three of these. And oh my goodness. Um, so Peace Fleece, for those who don't know, was set up. Now I could be wrong with this. They have a very, very good explanation on their website. Peace Fleece was set up in the Cold War, where a family company imported sheep from Russia into the US um, with the concept of like bridging the gap and then sold fleece from the yarn. Sorry, sold yarn from the fleece of those Russian sheep. And nowadays, um, given that we're no longer in the Cold War, they support indigenous um, indigenous farms, and yeah, that's why it's Navajo Navajo Rambouillet. So three skeins of this, and I'm wondering if I can pair this with this, which is Bare Naked Wools Stone Soup DK, and this is beautiful. 
it is such it's it's not quite a grey it's almost like an oatmeal colour 300 yards per four ounces so I do think this is 300 yards and this is 315 350 so it's a little bit thinner and it is uh where is this 80% wool and it's a blend of Rambouillet, Columbia, Lincoln, Churro 15% alpaca and llama, 5% combination of tencel, bamboo, silk and bison. Uh, so that is amazing. And yet, yeah, I just really love these together. Um, maybe in something colour work. So yeah, there's ultimately, what, 900, more than that, 1,050 yards of this and four, 300 yards of this. And again, a pattern suggestion. I think I like these together, but alternatively, a great pattern suggestion for this alone would also be welcome. Again, maybe a shawl, but I don't wear a lot of shawls, so it has to be a shawl I could wear. I'd find myself being able to wear. Yeah. Okay, a few more, a few more things in the box. It was a, it was a good box. So the last yarny goodness was also had me screaming a little bit. This is probably the thing that I'm most gutted that I can't get in the UK. And it is Canadian, and it is Briggs and Little. So, ugh, there's a lot of this, oh my goodness. Um, so this is Briggs and Little, which is a, um, I, someone tell me if I'm wrong, but in my head, it's kind of the woolly knit of Canada. The, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mill, um, and they do a lot of, they, they do a lot of bases, and it's very reasonably priced, and a wide range of colors. The only thing I think is really different is Briggs and Little, I don't think sell themselves. I think you have to find their stockists. And I also think that um, they have a much wider range of bases. Willie Knit pretty much just has, to, has to DK or fingering. And I think there's much more from Briggs and Little. Anyway, I have five skeins of this. Now it's a navy, but it's a really bright navy and you can see how it's almost a blue. Um, stunning, stunning. And then a single skein of this colour, which is like a cream colour. And um, I, people might remember, I made a no frills, a no frills sweatshirt in a, in a navy blue. And she was like, oh, I hope it's not too close to colour. It's a really different, like it's a much, much brighter blue. But the reason she included this is to make a colour work pattern. So it is 248 metres per skein, which means I've got loads <laughs> 1200 meters of the main color and then 250 meters of the contrast color so i would love some recommendations i am considering the festival sweater by petite knit that could be a good one like a, it's like a stripes um or something with color work like strand color work so recommendation very very welcome and then a few other bits in the box um, there was, of course, sorry, I'm being so just like bending over and getting out of camera. Um, there was a, a box of chocolates from her local chocolatier, um, which are amazing. They're being like rationed very slowly out of the box in the fridge, and a bag of beans, coffee beans, um, which is amazing because we drink a lot of coffee and we hand grind a lot of her, but we have a grinder, so she said whole bean, perfect. Then there was this, which is a lotion bar, which is Love and Leche, and um, it's a it's a lavender bar, and it's oh it's been bashed a bit in the tin, but it looks like two sheep heads. Can I see them there? It smells amazing. It smells like really natural lavender, like not that plasticky lavender, like a real yeah. Um, so that's amazing. Super nice for like when your hands get really dry, especially this time of year. And the last thing is also very cool. So people who saw that I sent her a box, oh actually no, I didn't include it in the one I did, but if you saw her opening hers, I sent a project bag. Mine was like a little zippy pouch. This is a work of art. Look at it. So it is a project bag. Um, it's got a project in it. Well, it's got a project I've swatched for and not cast on yet. It's got some pockets at the front and a drawstring and these webbing, web, webbed, webbing handles. And a little tag which I love, which says, Handmade with Love by Mega. So I love this so much because I could knit up all this yarn and I'll still remember that's from the yarn swap. But every time I'm knitting in this project bag, 
I will be like, oh, that's my project bag from Mega. So you can tell I've been incredibly lucky. I got so many things in my project uh, in my swap. I would recommend this completely. It was definitely quite expensive and the shipping was a bit stressful, but it was so worth it because I got so much joy out of picking her yarns and I am blown away with how many beautiful yarns I received. Um, I know that Inga of Knitting Traditions has a thread on her Ravelry where you can you can suggest you can put in that you're interested in a yarn swap and people can reply to you. So you could say like I'm interested in a yarn swap with somebody in North America or I'm interested in a yarn swap with somebody in Europe and then um you can pair up. So if you're interested that's maybe a good place to look. And yeah, it was amazing and I'm obviously a very, very lucky girl. It was like an early Christmas present kind of to myself and kind of from Mega all at once. Um and opening it the day after we moved, it was like soothing it was like uh it was like therapy <laughs> um but i would definitely love some recommendations for projects if you've seen anything here that you've knit with before or if you has a really good pattern in mind that i can cast on with these because i am super excited to work with them and the last thing i want to share is that in kind of a similar vein to a swap is that on Instagram, um, Emily, who is Coffee and Kafka, messaged me and said, hey, this is really out of the blue, how would you feel about being pen pals? Mm, and of course I was like, I would love to be a pen pal. But I did say to her, I'm moving, and my life is a bit stressful, so she was like, well, I'll do the first one. Sorry, I'm gathering the bits. I'll do the first one, and then you can post it back. And what I think is lovely about this is it's really, really nice, and just really heartwarming. So nice to get a package in the post and a much cheaper way of doing it than a big yarn swap because postage for a small parcel is much more reasonable. So I won't go through all of the things. There's a letter that she sent me that's lovely, but a few bits. She sent me this beautiful little mini skein of this like mint green, like peppermint colour. Um, this very festive stitch marker, which is a little Christmas tree. Um, a beautiful Christmas card that says Season's Greetings. Some stickers, uh, here's one of them, it's a little uh, cardigan and some festive teas, which I've not actually tried yet. Um, festive teas that are in flavours like eggnog and peppermint bark. Um, and she sent me a lovely letter, which I won't read out, um, but a beautiful, beautiful letter and I'm looking forward to this week having some time to sit down and reply and to start collecting a few little pieces to be able to send back to her at some time in January. So a huge thank you to Emily because I think I'd be quite nervous to message someone and be like, do you want to be pen pals? But actually, I'm so happy she did because it's so, so nice. And again, I'm really excited to send her something back. So that's everything for me. Um, I'll do a little personal update if anyone's, if anyone's interested. <laughs> Feel free to stick around. Um, and yeah, if not, and you're heading now, thanks for, thanks for watching. Oh, I wanted to make a final comment on acquisitions. I am planning to not buy any yarn until the end of February. I have a lot of yarn. Moving made me realise how much yarn I have. And so I've set myself a challenge, which is to not buy any yarn until the end of February. And if I do so, I will buy myself a set of Chowgu interchangeables in the small size, so like the up to four and a half mil. So stay tuned to see how I get on with that. Um, I don't need the yarn, and I'm thinking it's a good way to be more considerate. And like, if I still if I see a yarn tomorrow that I want, if I still want it at the end of February, I can buy it then. So I will have to think of another thing. Um, yeah, I thought I can show some some stuff in stash over the next few weeks. I do have a few things to be that are on order, so I will have a little bit to show next time. Um, but after that, hopefully, yeah, hopefully no more orders from here on out for yarn for a couple of months, just so I can start using some of the stuff I have in stash, make some space for some new yarns and try to just be a bit more considerate about things before I buy them instead of so much impulse purchases. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the last acquisition section for a little while, which is kind of exciting. I did want to say, that I was thinking of maybe running a q and in section instead of my acquisition section. We're very, very close to 5k followers, subscribers here. I just hit 2k subscribers, subscribers, I'm getting them mixed up. 2k over on Instagram, 5k here. And I thought maybe I'd put a little call for Q&A 
and I can be trying to answer two or three questions per episode for the next few weeks until my acquisition section returns. So if you're interested in that and you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll probably put a question box on Instagram um, closer to the next episode and hopefully there are some questions to answer. Um, so yeah, feel free to drop them in a comment below or to email me or to send them on Instagram. And I will replace acquisitions with some Q&As. It can be about me, it can be about knitting, it can be about yarn preferences, it can be about projects. Ultimately, I'll only answer the things that I want to answer. So feel free to ask whatever you want and maybe I'll pick. I'll, I'll filter them out as they arrive. So yeah, um, that is it for my acquisitions and the next few weeks of acquisitions. So yeah, a little bit of personal chat to round things off. If, you, if you're still here, feel free to grab some knitting. So yeah, um, it's been a ridiculous few weeks here. Um, I can't quite believe it's only been three weeks since the last podcast because it feels like um, it's been six months. Uh, first things first, I got Covid, which I think just about everyone in London somehow managed to catch. I have no idea where from, no one asked my bubble tested positive. Um, I didn't really go anywhere, I went to one theatre show that was socially distanced and no one else that came with me got Covid. So who knows, um, I am really really lucky because we could still move house and we still got to spend Christmas with family. So that was great because I know a lot of people caught it like late in December and then can now can't do anything for Christmas, maybe New Year and they're by themselves. That was very lucky. However, it did mean that we I didn't get to go to our, we had like a friend's Christmas dinner I didn't get to go to and we also missed, uh, I missed seeing my boyfriend's parents before um, we left and they're obviously they're heading back to New Zealand. So it's a bit of a shame because those were some things I was excited to go to. Um, however, by far the toughest part about having COVID is the absolute exhaustion. <laughs> I think today is the first day I felt kind of normal and it's been like a month. Well no, it's been like three weeks. Um, I think I'm now like 10 days clear or something and yeah, the so, so, so tired. Um, so yeah, I got really really not like really really sick i got pretty sick for a couple of days like bad flu for a couple of days but since then i've just been so so tired which has made it made moving really tricky um it was just really we had to move all the boxes down one i i moved from a top floor flat in london to a top floor flat in edinburgh um but fortunately we had lots of family and friends to help us out so yeah that's been kind of tough and just really really yeah like napping every day fortunately i'm on holiday from work so i can nap every day um, and then yeah, we moved into the flat. It is it's lovely. It's beautiful. Um, I've not really done much exploration of the area, although I have obviously gone to the yarn shop. So yesterday I took a walk to Ginger Twist, which is one of I think three yarn shops in Edinburgh, and it is um, it's tiny. I think they refer to it as like a yarn wardrobe because honestly, it's it's not much bigger than like a big wardrobe. <laughs> um, so well stocked though they had like something for everyone including their own hand dyed yarn and yeah it's it's like an 18 minute walk from my house so i officially have a local yarn store and i also discovered that they run a knit night and um, which happens to also be the knit night that um amy palco goes to and she mentioned to me before about her knit night and then i didn't know it was the same one and that's also pretty close to to me so i'm really excited because Hopefully I'll go to that soon. And there's also a craft night with Sakami, who are as another hand dyer. Um, I think it's a couple and they hand dye yarn. I've got some of their yarn actually. And I know that um, Ode from Bubbles and Berries went to their last one. So yeah, I'm kind of hoping to see some people um, in January. We'll see, I think there are some lockdown restrictions coming. But um, it might be nice to do some knit nights. And of course we'll have our online knit night in January and what else we lost um we lost our dog since the last episode our beautiful big bear um got very very suddenly sick and he had to be put down that was really really tough um that was the same week as the covid diagnosis and i was like what did i do wrong like what what is the universe sending me right now um yeah he was only three and a half and i've got a picture of him in because he's a beautiful dog 
and um, three and a half and it's a really really aggressive form of um, blood cancer and so he got sick in a couple of weeks and the doctors thought he'd just eat something funny and give him like a probiotic and then two weeks later we were back because it wasn't any better and unfortunately he had to get put down so that was real tough that was really really tough um, and it was just really weird to have like Christmas without him there because he's just such a big personality of a dog um, so yeah that was really tough um, and then I also got a new job um, I'm in the same company but I moved to a different role in the company it's a role I've been working for for quite a while like working towards I was on a real campaign to get myself this new job um, and so I start that not quite the first week back I've got a few days back and then the second week of January I start in a new team with a whole new job title uh, so yeah that's like I say it's just been a lot like real highs and real lows the past few weeks um, and I'm just I'm glad we're here at one point I was so anxious I was like I just don't think we're gonna get to Edinburgh and that was so unreasonable but it just felt like everything was going against us and I was like it's not gonna happen Um, it did <laughs> we made it we're here flat is beautiful we're close to my family it's like a 30 minute walk to walk along the beach like Portobello beach Um have a yarn shop like what more can a girl want um so yeah that's a bit about life and I did a load a load of knitting sort of up until we moved and honestly I've been so drained that I've been really struggling to even pick up knitting like I just want to sleep so I, I'm starting to feel a bit better and I'm hoping that will also result in a bit more yarny productivity um and hopefully means I'll be a bit back on track I mean that's definitely, I was still in like Covid brain fog when I tried to film last week so hopefully I'm back to regular filming schedule and yeah I'm gonna go, I've got a few more days off, I'm not back at work until the 4th of January so I have still, what is today Thursday so I've got a few more days off and yeah that's all from me so I'm gonna go, we're cooking, I'm cooking my favourite dinner it's um I will put the recipe link below, it's so good. Um, I'm going to make some black dal or dal makani uh, for dinner, which takes like, you cook the beans all day. So I've started that, so I'm going to go cook some of that, make some lunch, and then this afternoon do some editing hopefully to get this online, and unpack some boxes because, I mean the camera is resting on a moving box, but a little insight into the chaos that is around me <laughs> so yeah hopefully today I'll get some unpacking done and we can start getting towards a bit more normal life but thank you so much for watching uh, especially for sticking to the end because this is an epic video I think let me know how you've been getting on and um, if you've got any new cast-ons let me know if you have some suggestions for my yarn swap box yarns I would love to hear them and if you have any questions that I, you'd like me to talk about um, either about me or or my work if that's remotely interesting or knitting or other crafts yeah drop them below and I will try to pick a few to answer next time I wish you all the best for the new year I hope you enjoy the next couple of days I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and I'll speak to you in 2022 bye